Hello students. As you know, we have been studying the seven natural wonders of the world since we've come back to school this year. And those are all wonderful and awesome, but anytime you make a list, there's always someone who says, why wasn't this on the list? Well, the thing that I most think, why wasn't this on the list of wonders, is Yellowstone National Park. It is a beautiful place full of thermal features. Thermal features are powered by hot water that becomes hot deep below the Earth's surface near magma chambers. Some of the thermal features in Yellowstone include springs like this one, the Grand Prismatic Spring. It is beautiful and you see these colors that are created by the algae and bacteria that live in this strangely acidic and hot water. This one is the Morning Glory Pool. It is more of a yellowish color. The water has cooled over time. A uh, hundred years ago, it was mostly blue, but different things have caused the temperatures to change, and now it's a yellow colored bacteria that loves it. This is a spring, which means it usually slowly bubbles water outward, but once in a while, it erupts in what's called a geyser. A geyser is when water shoots out of the earth in a sudden burst. It can last a few minutes or a few hours. The most famous geyser in Yellowstone is Old Faithful. It's called Old Faithful because it erupts very, very often and on a very regular interval. About every 88 minutes, a new stream of water is blasted into air for a few minutes at this particular wonder. In addition to um, the pools and the mud pots, there are the hot springs that create travertine. It's like having a cave on the outside. The hot springs sometimes dissolve a lot of limestone as they bubble up through the earth. And when the hot water gets to the surface, the, limes, the limestone deposits back out in strange formations like these terraces. Now, why does Yellowstone have all these thermal features? Good question. It's because it's actually a huge super volcano. This volcano has had three massive explosions in the history of Earth. One about 2.1 million years ago, one 1.2 million years ago, and the most recent one was about 600,000 years ago. These explosions are so big that they blanketed most of the US in ash from the explosions. Could it happen again? It could, but not likely very soon. Now, the connection of art to Yellowstone. Yellowstone is such a weird place that when people first came back and told tales about it and said, it smells of brimstone and fire and water seep from the ground and blow up, people were like, that's not even the truth. So Congress and other people helped arrange some expeditions to visit Yellowstone and see what it really was. These first expeditions included surveyors, a painter named Thomas Moran, and a photographer to document what was really going on out in the West, and also to decide how this place should be treated. After the survey was complete, the group came and testified before Congress, and they showed the photos and the surveys, but Congress said it was really the paintings of Thomas Moran that helped convince them to say, this is such a special place that it should be set aside and forever protected for all the generations of people to see. This was a time before color photography, and so they really felt a more emotional connection with Moran's colorful pictures that kind of brought the whole panorama into view. There's a neat local connection to Thomas Moran. The Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa hosts a great deal of his pictures, a, around 110, and the one you're looking at here is one of those. So there's your local connection. When the Gilcrease Museum reopens, you might go visit some of it there. So the art of Thomas Moran, the photography of Jackson, and the surveys convinced Congress that this should be a national park. And in 1872, Ulysses Grant signed a proclamation saying that two million acres of mountain wilderness and amazing geysers and vibrant landscapes would be preserved forever for future generations to enjoy. Now that I've shared some of my favorite facts about Yellowstone with you, I'm going to let you watch about four minutes of a video by National Geographic to learn a little more. Yellowstone is epic, strange, and iconic. It is well deserving of its protected status. 
but how did it come to be the world's first national park? Archaeologists have found evidence of human activity in Yellowstone that dates back at least 11,000 years. Oral histories of Salish Native Americans suggest their ancestors were here 3,000 years ago. Today, there are still 26 Native American tribes that are connected to this land. Some of the first European visitors included fur traders and trappers in the late 1700s. But the first big incentive for settlers came in 1863, gold. Prospectors flocked to Yellowstone in hopes of finding more. The Northern Pacific Railroad Company heard of the wonders of Yellowstone. A big attraction like this could help their plans to expand the railroad west. So they sponsored the washburn langford Doan Expedition of 1870. As the first formal expedition of Yellowstone, they explored vast regions of the park, including Tower Fall, Yellowstone Lake, and the Geyser Basins. Their most memorable achievement? Naming Old Faithful. Painter Thomas Moran, as well as a photographer and sketch artist, were also on the expedition team. Their work introduced Yellowstone to the world and captured the imagination of Congress. Then, on March 1, 1872, President Ulysses S. Grant signed an act establishing Yellowstone National Park, the country's very first national park. The park is around two million acres, an expansive wilderness with places that even today few have seen, filled with wildlife including 285 species of birds and over 65 species of mammals. But what's on top of this park is nothing compared to the giant reserve of magma that lies below. Thermal power is what makes Yellowstone tick. Old Faithful remains true to its name, and to this day gushes up thousands of gallons of hot water every hour or so. It's one of the most famous natural features in Yellowstone, but it's not the only one. There are over 10,000 thermal features in Yellowstone, including hot springs, mud pots, and steam vents. They sit in one giant caldera of a supervolcano, some 45 miles across at its widest. 2.1 million years ago, Yellowstone erupted and covered over 5,000 square miles with ash, about 6,000 times the volume of material ejected from Mount St. Helens in 1980. It's among the largest volcano eruptions known to man. Yellowstone is still active, and another eruption is possible, but it probably won't happen in the next thousand or even 10,000 years. In the meantime, Yellowstone hosts millions of guests every year. There are now 59 national parks in the United States, but Yellowstone will always be the world's first.